Hi folks, welcome to today's edition of My Life with Robert Burns. We're really pleased to have you along with us again today. Um, for those of you who watched this before, you know that I'm Douglas McKenzie and my friend and colleague from New Covenant Burns Club, Jim Thompson, is there giving us a hand with the questions. Hi Jim. Hi Douglas, hi everybody. It's a, it's a pretty exciting day for us because this episode is our first international session and we're delighted that our guest today is a the Senior Vice President of the Robert Burns World Federation and a leading light in the Robert Burns Association of North America. To tell us all about his life with Robert Burns, please welcome Henry Kearney. Hello everyone, I hope everyone's good and well and safe wherever you are in the world and thank you very much Douglas and Jim for giving me this opportunity. Well hi Henry, thanks for agreeing to be a guest on My Life with Robert Burns. Um, are, are you well today? How's things in Canada? Um, pretty good. Um, you know, the numbers in the, the COVID are just starting to rise again. So I think, uh, you know, based on what I saw in the UK, we're uh, following much, much the same way. So, but apart from that, uh, we're heading into autumn and uh, beautiful countryside and uh, weather's lovely at the moment. Fantastic. Well, for those that don't already know you, Henry, perhaps you could tell us a wee bit about yourself. Uh, sure. Um, I was born in 1953 and uh, raised in Irvine, Yorkshire. Uh, I had an unremarkable but uh, very enjoyable childhood, mostly growing up uh, in Irvine. Uh, my father served in the British Army and I wanted to actually get my schooling done in Scotland, so I tended to stay with my grandparents while they travelled about the world. I attended uh, Loudoun Montgomery, uh, where uh, Miss King, who will come on to later, uh, with regards to my Burns influence, and in Irvine Royal Academy, it was William McIlvanny that was uh, part of my, my school influences in Burns. Um, I got an accordion from my auntie when I was seven years old and learned to play it just by year at, at first. And then, of course, I, I did go to some lessons later. And some of the first songs were songs by Jimmy Shand uh, playing Robert Burns, which I used to listen to and just uh, copy those songs. I've been married to Shona for 47 years, have two wonderful children, Leslie and Martin, and five grandchildren. Megan and Ethan were born in Scotland and came over with us when we emigrated. Uh, but I have three boys, Daniel, Nathan, and Finlay, who are all Canadian boys. Um, and I presently have dual citizenship and try to get back to Scotland as much as, as possible. I had very early aspirations of being a football player. Uh, it's bad if you would have seen me from about uh, my early years right through until I was, I was in my 20s, I would always have a ball in my foot somewhere uh, playing football. But common sense prevailed and I actually became an electrical engineer by profession, but moved to management in the second part of my career. We moved to Orkney from Irvine, you know, after marriage uh, in 1981. And from Orkney, just through the, the business of the oil business, I moved down to Inverurie in Aberdeen in 1989, then Canada in 2006. And I presently stay in Calgary, Alberta, and I've been here with my family since 2010. And are you still working, Henry? I'm not. I'm retired now. I've been retired for about two years. But uh, the Burns career uh, has tended to be almost a full-time job now. So very enjoyable and uh, keeps me busy. So do you have time for any, any hobbies or other pastimes? Um, unfortunately, I've been through a number of uh, operations on my feet. Um, and I've actually just been through one just not long ago, so I'm still in recuperation. I maybe look okay here, but I won't let you look below the belt line. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been, I've been retired and uh, Burns and music uh, has really taken over my life, especially this past sort of 10 years. Yeah, I, th I think we're all in the same situation under the belt line. We're all wearing our, our jeans or our shorts or, our, or whatever. It's uh, Zoom's a very convenient thing when it comes to Dressing from the waist up. I hear you, Douglas. <laughs> did, I, did I see somewhere uh, that you'd, you'd done a, a bit of poetry writing? Um, did I see something on the Piper Alpha? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I, I, I actually worked with Occidental um, when I was up in Orkney and then moved down to Aberdeenshire with uh, Occidental again after the Piper Alpha, which was a dreadful situation. And I started to write uh, a poem about Piper Alpha, uh, which I, I, you know, I've, I've sent over. In fact, Willie Gibson, I think, has used it with uh, 
the trades in, in, in Scotland. Um, but I do write other poetry and very active in the Calgary Burns Club uh, writing poetry. The only one thing I don't have is a memory. Um, I, need, I need to have things in front of me to read. Uh, I've probably written about, 100 and, about 120 different poems and songs uh, in the past five to ten years. That's a tremendous achievement. Thank you. And, uh, and what, what, what's, what's the, the, the life like in Canada in terms of your, your seasons and such like with, with weather? Is there, there's plenty, plenty good weather and good nature to write about, is there? There is. There's plenty of stuff. In fact, I started to write one called The, uh, uh, the Canadian Moose um, in light of uh, Robert Burns' tale moose. But uh, I started writing one along that lines. Um, there's plenty of subjects here. I've written about the life of the Pacific salmon and various other wildlife that's here as well. But obviously I wrote songs about Calgary and Alberta. In fact, I actually wrote a song which is on one of the CDs and it's called The Wild Rose of Alberta. And uh, it went down reasonably well with uh, most folk that's, that's heard it. That sounds lovely. Well, we'll get you talking a wee bit about uh, your, your career with Burns now, and I'll, I'll pass over to Jim to, to start that discussion. Okay, Jim? Thanks very much, Douglas. And just to confirm to the viewers, uh, trust me, Jim Thompson's wearing his trousers. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> anyway, Henry, how did you first get started with Burns? Well, uh, playing Scottish and Burns songs with the accordion was my first kind of introdu introduction to it, to be honest with you. Um, My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose was one of the first songs that I actually played. Um, and some of the waltzes that, uh, that, that, that were about at the time um, was where I did. And when I went to uh, Loudoun Montgomery, uh, Miss King was her name, uh, who was almost like a, a Miss Jean Brodie, uh, just an archetypal Scott, uh, Scots lady. Uh, read poetry and encouraged class singing and quite, quite a bit of burn songs in primary school. Uh, when I went to Irvine Royal Academy, uh, William McIlvanny was the guy who encouraged some of the Burns recitations and readings in his English class. So through school, it was mostly there. But, you know, it was always mostly the music that uh, kind of kept me really interested right up until about um, 15, 20 years ago. And Burns suppers, particularly in the 70s in, in Ayrshire, um, obviously Aberdeenshire as well. Uh, speaking of Burns Suppers, I, I, I hear through the grapevine that you've been a member of Irvine for a while. I'm a, I'm a life member of Irvine. Um, I'm very, very proud to have that life membership of Irvine. Uh, a lot of good friends there, obviously, and, and some of my old schoolmates are there. I've met up with a few of them uh, since I've been, been to Canada, so we've uh, managed to, to, to resurrect that uh, friendship that we had. Um, yeah, it, being of in Burns Club, it was the only Burns Club I was a member of uh, when I was in Scotland. My career and obviously the music uh, kept me pretty busy uh, throughout all of, the, all, of the, all of my time there. Do you remember your first Burns Supper? I actually do. My first Burns Supper was in Irvine in the early 70s, uh, over 45 years ago, goodness me. At St Andrew's Lodge, I was invited to go to the Burns Supper there. Um, a memorable experience in many ways, and first learn Burns uh, was amazing at that point in time, which I didn't know. With, I didn't know until then. You must have had quite a few Burns supper highlights in your time then. Loads of highlights. Um, Aberdeen, when we were in there in the early nineties, I witnessed, I think, one of the most impressive Tam shanters I've ever ever seen. Uh, you know, after the dinner was done, they dimmed all the lights, and this gentleman, I can't even remember his name, it's so long ago. Uh, recited Tam O'Shanter and would creep up behind you at the relevant parts and uh, it was a very scary but very fun-filled uh, Tam O'Shanter. In Calgary 2011 where I emceed the largest supper I've ever attended with 800 plus dressed gentlemen attendees and the other one that was notable for me was having to toast the lassies in 2016 where my dear friend Jane Brown replied for the first time in Calgary's history of 43, 44 years. Normally a Turbolton bachelor style only where they got to do what they want. I didn't at that point in time. Right. Jane can be a handful of the best of times. I certainly would not like to be uh, being followed by her in terms of her speech. Uh, uh, Jane, I think Jane, talk, 
think Jane told us that story right. uh, when, when she did her podcast. <laughs> oh dear. The, you've obviously become involved with other Burns clubs, moving to Canada with Calgary, and, and you've you've certainly been obviously become involved with the, the Rubber Burns World Federation. What, what's the story behind all that? Um, the, the, the first club that I actually joined was was obviously the Auburn Burns Club um, as, as a life member. Um, I've been a 10-year member of Calgary Burns Club now, and I'm president uh, uh, president for the second time. I've been a member of the Medicine Hat Burns Club, which is just about a two, two and a half year drive from here, and attend their Jolly Beggars Banquet annually, uh, which is usually about September, but uh, unfortunately it's been cancelled this year. I'm a member and president of Rabana uh, currently, which covers Canada and USA, and uh, lots and lots of really good friends um, with those conferences, and again, these are all cancelled uh, due to COVID. I'm a member and, and uh, senior vice president of RBWF, and I'm extremely proud to have even been nominated to, 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 to be in the RBWF in the first place within the board, and um, I return to Scotland as often as possible. I've spoken and played music at many other Burns clubs and functions over the past 20 years, uh, and where we first came to Canada, I was staying in a place called Fort McMurray, uh, which didn't, or they used to have one, but unfortunately folded uh, long before I actually got there. But um, I had to host my own burn suppers when I was in Fort McMurray, which was memorable to say the least. Some of my friends came from far and wide, like uh, from Newfoundland and um, French Canadians. So I would make them uh, recite some of the, the poetry and you got some wonderful accents and accentuations of the words, I can assure you. You're, you're talking about uh, the Robert Burns Association of North America. Um, how, how many clubs are there? I mean, a, a number of our, uh, our viewers won't know much about how Burns operates within uh, the, the wider world. Is, is he very popular? It, it, it used to be extremely popular. I think like most um, other kind of organizations that it's tending to die off and we're trying to find a way of resurrecting that. There are, uh, you know, approximately 20 very active Burns clubs uh, within the organization and many, many individual members that used to have Burns clubs there. You know, there was Burns clubs over in Victoria, Fort McMurray, that have, have, have basically, and one in Calgary here, um, Shehalian, which have basically folded um, through um, the demographics of the age. And we're trying to find ways to, similar to what RBWS trying to do, and even Calgary, is to try and get uh, more membership and, and try and look at innovative ways of, of, of bringing that membership back. But the ones who are within Rabana now are very active and um, great friends and, and very knowledgeable Bunsians as well. Um, they're knowledgeable people, they have very similar interests. And, you know, to be honest with you, a real lad for your ship, to be accepted in the Burns movement, which from where I am, it's a real honour. There, there's no doubt about that. You find it's difficult to, to get the next generation to come along. That's the problem a lot of the clubs in Scotland have. It certainly is. And, and I, I believe that, you know, everywhere we've got to be more innovative. Uh, one of the things that, that we're looking at with the RBWF is, you know, we've got um, the Pacific Rim uh, representatives uh, coming to the, the, the board meetings. We obviously have Rabana representation from Cal uh, Canada and America and myself now involved, but there seems to be a kind of big area that's, that's not really um, been covered, which is mostly Europe. And, you, you know, uh, when you think of the, the Russian amount of people who are actually, you know, love Burns and, and people keep in contact with them, um, it would be good to have a representative from there as well. And we're looking at that at the moment, although that's early days uh, in, in negotiations. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that it's mainly expat Scots that, uh, that join Burns clubs in North America? It is. It's, it, it's mostly expats. But, but then again, you know, the Scots who have been here for generations just love their, their, their you know, the history of who they are and, and their names. And many other Canadians who have got absolutely nothing to do with Scotland. Um, in Calgary, we had a, a gentleman who was in the the, the Canadian Air Force, um, who's basically, his name is uh, Vlad Dillon, absolutely no um, 
relationship to Scotland whatsoever, just as an example. And uh, many other people who just love the fact, the music and, and the fact of Burns and want to know more about them. So we've, we've been very fortunate in Calgary that we have a full, a full um, 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 uh, membership. Excellent. Do you have um, do you have any any favourite poems or songs? Oh yeah, I've got uh, I've got a number of uh, po number of songs and certainly poems. But as I said, I'm I'm just one of these people that doesn't have a memory. Um, my my favourite song of all time has got to be Scots Way. Um, I love singing it whenever whenever we get an opportunity. Is that you lining us up for a wee opportunity for a couple of verses, or or I think Scots Way is short enough we could do the, the whole song. Oh, I could give you that, no bother. I'll just uh, whack my thrassel, as I say. Excellent. Scots wa he, we Wallace bled. Scots swam Bruce has often led. Welcome to your gory bed, or to victory. Now's the day and now's the hour. See the front o' battle lower. See approach proud Edward's power chains and slavery. War will be a traitor knave, war will fill a coward's grave, war say base as be a slave, let him turn and flee. War for Scotland's king and law, freedom's sword will strongly draw, freemen stand or freemen fall, let him follow me. By oppressions, woes and pains, by your sons in servile chains, we will drain our dearest veins, but they shall be free. Lay the proud usurpers low, tyrants fall in every foe, liberties in every blow, let us do or dee. We, we would have joined in, Henry, but we've got some experience of, of trying to sing over Zoom. And, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, community singing over Zoom doesn't work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mind you, I, I'd, uh, I'd love to be able to show you a photograph of Jim Thompson with tears rolling down his cheeks any time we've tried it. Okay. <laughs> Henry, they tried to sing Old Lang Syne, and I'm no joking, there's like a drunk man, man bouncing off the walls. And, and the further away with that Zoom thing, the further you are away for the subject, the longer the gap in time. So therefore, I'm right next to Douglas, you know, I'm only six miles up the road, right, so that's no bother. But if you've got something, the priest, they're coming in, you know, that microsecond later all the time. It's hilarious stuff, it really is. It's, it's side-splittingly funny. It's yeah. been so good that for our Friday night get-togethers, uh, for the last few weeks, there's almost been an insistence that we do some singing, just so that we can laugh at it. <laughs> I can tell you a really funny story about Ravana. Um, we were in Philadelphia, and at the end of the night, uh, we, we, had that, we had an accordion. Um, they were a kind of Cayley band there, and uh, I got hold of one of the accordion uh, for the guy. And of course, John Barleycorn had been well and truly supped uh, by a number of people. And um, <laughs> two of my friends wanted to, one of them is Ronnie O'Byrne, who I'm sure you know, and, uh, and, <laughs> and another wanted to sing Auld Lang Syne and I said well that's great so we kicked off with Auld Lang Syne and I think it was uh, in fact it was um, Ian Mack uh, who was over from Scotland and and the two of them of course I got the accordion and I started to play one version of Auld Lang Syne but one was singing the old version and the other one was singing the new version so you had three versions of Auld Lang Syne going at the one time and hilarity was had by all because this was something to hear, I can assure you. <laughs> you talked, Henry, about playing the accordion. Do you play any other instruments? Um, I play a, t a t touch of guitar, a wee bit of rhythm guitar, um, but I don't play it enough, to be honest with you. And um, I've, I've dabbled with a few other instruments. Um, I've tried the chanter and things like that. The keyboards is the main one. That's the one I do all the recordings with for the CDs that we do. We've done seven CDs with the Calgary Burns Club um, and been very proud to be part of the last four CDs. Yeah. Well, I, think, I think with that track, that track record, I'm sure we'll maybe get another song out of you before we're finished here well, today. I don't have many in me. 
Henry, one of my spies tells me you've got your own recording studio. Is that accurate? I, I, I do. In fact, I, it's, it's a portable studio, but it's downstairs. Um, and that's where my keyboards and my other instruments are with the, obviously the recording uh, stuff. And I also do the videos um, and the, the CDs for our dinners. Uh, they tend to be a little bit less than they were before. We're in the 600s and we're probably down to 450s now. Um, just as the years have went on, but uh, we do a recording of that, and we 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 actually distribute the CDs and the DVDs of of, of those things. Oh, very good. Yeah. You, you mentioned earlier on about your your event with your Jane Brown over, um, uh -huh. and that was obviously quite memorable. Have you any other memorable suppers that you could tell us about? Um, there were, you know, there's quite, there's quite a few suppers that I had, but um, the the the, the the one with Jane just was unbelievable. You know, they'd never they'd never had a lady um, up on stage at, at any time ever before, and I always remember you know her uh, when we were saying we were going to be bringing a lady over, and um, it, it actually went down okay because people had known Jane in the past, and she was absolutely brilliant. She did a wonderful um, immortal memory. And I remember at the time she was actually full of the, the cold or the flu at the time, but she 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 soldiered and battled on. That has to be the most memorable uh, burn supper I've ever been at, to be honest with you. I don't think it's been beaten by any. There's there's various things that I've seen, but uh, she she did a wonderful job on behalf of of, of Scotland and and Robert Burns. Uh, Jane Jane was special as a president. She came at a time when. Royal Lawns World Federation, in my view, needed a president that could actually, you know, engage with people and become involved with people around the world. And, and she did really, really well at it. And I know she's been to Canada several times since, and particularly in relation to Medicine Hat. Yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she, uh, she's their um, patron of, of uh, Medicine Hat, I believe. Henry, you've told us a bit about your your uh, your musical ability, and and you've told us about writing some poetry. But I also believe that you you do a bit of writing or a bit of journalism for the uh, for your your Burns newsletter. Yeah, it's called the Calgary Claver, and and uh, we get we get people to put in articles and and various stuff like that, and we cover as much as we can. We give a page to the RBWF uh, president. The Rabana president and obviously the Calgary Buns Club president, and we we it's been going now for about uh, I think it's about three three years four years now that we've been doing it uh, three three times a year but we've cut it down to twice per year now and the next one is due out uh, this month which I'm just starting to work at and get uh, the articles in for it um, it's well it's well received uh, whatever whatever we send it so it's uh, it's nice to hear the nice comments on it. You must, um, you must have some heroes in in the Bond story, um, even if it's a, even if it's the subject of of one of your favourite songs. Uh, who who would be a particular hero? It has to be Tama Shanter. I mean, you know, and, and I've got your book, Jim. By the way, I've, uh, I, I'm a proud owner of one of your one of your copies of your book. I just love that poem. I wish I could recite it. I don't even try. It's uh, there's so many really talented people that can recite it. It's, uh, I don't class myself as a Burns scholar, I'm a Burns lover, especially of music, but Tama Shanter has to be the most wonderful tale. And it, it doesn't matter how many times you hear it, I still, I still have that smile on my face that of, of the, the start to the ending of that. Um, it's just a fantastic story. And, and, and I know uh, you, Jim, have took a particular interest in it as well. Aye, the book's uh, it's just to be sold out. I mean, that's a few years now, right enough, because I, the vanity made me produce it at a certain date because 224 years after the Commander edition. Aye. But um, yeah, that was just my personal vanity, but it's just to be sold out. And and to be fair, I, I listened to a young man uh, at the weekend last Friday doing a parody that he's written about Tama Shanta, and it's one of the most wonderful things I've ever heard. Right. Young man, the name of Simon Lamb, who's who's a, 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 a 
contemporary poet in Ayrshire and, and a very, very talented young man. And hopefully he's going to release that as a video and, and I would recommend you have a wee look at that. In fact, I'd recommend to the audience that when it comes out, try and catch it because it is absolutely stunningly brilliant, really. I absolutely would. Um, yeah. it, you know, when I said about being a Burn and Burn scholar, in Calgary here we have what they're called the Carney Group, no relation, maybe a relation in uh, many days gone by when they couldn't spell, but it was uh, Dr. Uh, Bob Carney, Robert Carney, that, that formed, uh, that was here, wrote a beautiful book that uh, we, we give to speakers. And the Carney Group really looks after the kind of historical aspect of, of, of Robert Burns. And they produce papers which are published on our website that you'll see there. Um, so we have a number of, of, of really good Burnsians that uh, really delve deeply into the, the life and times of Robert Burns. But if you ask me about uh, another favourite, one of my favourite songs, um, and which was one of the first so songs I learned to play, was uh, Red Red Rose. I just loved that. And again, <laughs> I just loved uh, to, moving away from, from the, the, the more serious side of the song, um, to see Jane Brown and Willie doing Red Red Rose uh, as a skit was uh, absolutely hilarious. When uh, Willie gets in the gubbies, they say, with the rose, it's... Uh, it's quite a little <laughs> And uh, is that you kind of lining yourself up to give us a, a, at least a verse of Red Red Rose? Oh, I could give you a verse or two. I, I, I hope the voice holds up um, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how it does. Okay. Oh, my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love is like the melody that sweetly played in tune. So fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry, till all the seas gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt away the sun. I will love thee still, my dear, while the sands o' light shall run. And fare thee will, my only love, and fare thee will a while, and I will come again, my love, though it were 10,000 miles. Well done. Nice. Well done there. Love, a lovely, lovely song. Just a, well, my memory uh, is not the best, but uh, that's what I can remember of the songs. So. Uh, I think uh, I, I think we, we we're all starting to suffer for that problem as we're as we're getting older. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, have you got anything else that you want to ask Henry about uh, his Burns career? Um, not about his career. I'm just uh, Rabana Henry. What's the plans for Rabana and and as, as we're moving forward in terms of conferences and things like that, are, are you planning one for next year? We're, we've got a board meeting tomorrow night, actually, um, and we're, we're looking at, we're trying to get a, a, a virtual AGM put together and a, a meeting of the members by November of this year is the plan. We should have had a conference in Calgary come April, May next year. It's extremely doubtful that that's going to happen just based on, on where we are with lockdowns and everything. And again, we're going to try and look at, uh, you know, some form of virtual event if, if, if that's where we have to go. And those decisions are going to be taken very soon. It's very similar to RBWF having to cancel their conference. And we're in the last stages of actually cancelling our big dinner here in Calgary. I know that Medicine Hat and many other clubs in North America have cancelled their, their celebrations for January and looking at something else maybe later in the year. So it's, it's a terrible time and we have to try and think ahead for the unknowns. So I guess that's the best answer I can give you, Jim, on, on that question. What, what about uh, any kind of other ambitions in terms of your, your, uh, your, your role within the, the Federation? How do you see that going forward? Are you planning in the hope that uh, we're allowed to. Are you planning any world trips with that one? I absolutely. I had I had three trips planned for this year already, and um, you know one was 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 down to Atlanta, where the Rabana conference was going to be, but it was cancelled in May. 
um, and I plan to travel through most of Rabana territory this year and next year as president, because we are president for two years here in Rabana. And obviously, uh, when I become president of the RBWF, which is planned for next September, I had planned to take a trip over to Australia and even over to Europe and, and, and Russia, um, along with Scotland, obviously. Um, Scotland would definitely be one of my, one of my two or three of my, my main trips. But just to try and keep in contact and try and let people um, you know, get, get in touch with people and, and keep this thing going. I'm so wary that, that the demographics and age groups of the, you know, the Burns movement is, is, is dying off, to be honest with you. At the AGM on Saturday, the list was getting longer of people who had passed. Um, that's a kind of scary thought if we're not bringing new members in. Yep. If you ever, ever get to Australia, I recommend the, the, the Robert Burns Club of Melbourne I was there about 10 years ago and they made us extremely welcome. Okay, that's good to know. I mean, I know Jim alone over there and uh, I met Jim a couple of times at conferences and um, I think he's just retiring from RBWF and there's a, a new person coming into that role. So I would fully intend to go over and meet them and say hello to them and have a chat with them. Um, being allowed to, of course, uh, sometime uh, in 20, late 21, 22. Very good. Well, hopefully that will all work out for you. Yeah. So I, I think we're, we're coming close to, to the end of the, the podcast. So it just leaves me with the, the, the requirements and the honour to say thank you very much. Uh, thank you for giving us your time and telling us all about your life with Robert Burns. Thank you very much, Henry. I thank you, Douglas, and, and you, Jim. And, and thanks to everyone who's had the confidence in nominating me for office and all the organisations I'm involved in. And thanks to all the members worldwide have kept Robert Burns' memory alive and continue to do so. But uh, really, uh, thank you for this opportunity to both of you. Thanks, Henry.